watching Throttle House. I'm Thomas. And I'm James. And this is the Charger Hellcat Red Eye. And that is the new M5 CS. <laughs> the M5 CS, the quickest and most powerful BMW ever made. It's over 200 pounds lighter than the M5 competition, has 10 more horsepower, and is adorned with carbon fiber, gold bronze accenting, and carbon ceramic brakes. All competition sport goodies significant enough to make you ignore that extra dent in your wallet. Or you can loosen your cravat realize money is actually a thing, and save $50,000 by getting a Charger Hellcat Red Eye. It has the same number of doors, but more power than that BMW, on paper, and a higher top speed. But most importantly, it has a no Fs given attitude. This is the ultimate super sedan showdown. If you're new to Throttle House, we do car reviews, track tests, and quite a lot of messing around. So subscribe and hit the bell. All right. All right, before we do this, yes. and you get slaughtered. No, what, no. Feast your eyes on the new M5 CS. All right, listen. This is a beautiful car. It's wonderful. It's really good it is, looking. It is arguably, maybe apart from the M2CS, the best looking current BMW. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Anyway, for, a, for this year, I have a new hood. Ooh. Yes, it gives it a more sinister look, they say. Okay. Need I remind you, James, that this company likes to have fun. BMW is very serious. Well, yeah, they're a bit playful. But this company likes to have fun. The color names for this car, are, you know what this one is? Uh, this is Hell Raisin. It is Hell Raisin, that's right. Super stock. I have a list here of all the color names, okay? And like, they're seriously fun. I'm gonna read them to you, ready? Okay, all right. We got Frostbite, Go Mango, Hell Raisin, Cinnamon Stick, Smoke Show, Triple Nickel, White Knuckle, Camel Toe, it's like a light brown, Harry Pewter, Purple Nurple. Why do I feel like you made up most of those? I did, about halfway they started being completely fake. But all you right. get the idea, right? Yes, okay, they're fun color yeah. names, right? But this, Yep. The M5. Uh -huh. This is a new color. $5,000 option. $5,000. Frozen deep green metallic. It looks like it gets dirty really easily. Yeah, Matt. No, James. Thomas. I wasn't calling you Matt. Okay. The colors aside then. Yeah. Yes, that has 797 horsepower. And yes, this costs $170,000. Say it, what was that number? $170,000. So it's a bit louder if everyone can hear $170,000. Uh, but. <laughs> so much money. 627 horsepower. Yeah. Four wheel drive. Yeah. BMW's cheeky underrating power. 100% guaranteed to be that, yeah. Also, these are both, I just want to say these are both really cool four door sedans. Very I love cool. the fact that we got these numbers, these prices, this styling, like color. Well, they're, both, they're, both, ha, so they're cool. both subtly upgraded to the top trim, right? The red eye just has a little red eye. And this just has some bronze accents. And the, and what do you mean it just what do you mean subtly upgraded? It's just bronze, 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 carbon fiber, carbon fiber, carbon fiber, honk, honk, but beep, I still think, honk, beep, punch. I, okay. <laughs> can, can we go drive, do a drag race yeah, now? Yeah, you're done, mate. Okay. Yeah. On any normal day, a Hellcat red eye is a very formidable foe. But from the seat of an M5 CS, I'm not worried. It's a pain in the ass to get this into launch control mode, but I've done it. Uh, I'm in manual mode, DSC off, Sport Plus engine, launch control activated. Uh, yeah, I'm, he's, he's just gonna get smoked. He's, he's gonna make smoke while getting smoked. Okay. All right, as you've probably seen before on Throttle House, for some reason, I always end up in the Hellcats. These cars are literally impossible to launch on a non-prep surface. That said, I'm gonna do everything I possibly can to get it off the line quickly. And I have noticed that the, the launch control in this is a little bit better than I remember. It does spin the wheels 
like crazy though. So let's just see what happens. Let's just see what happens here. Come on, 797 horsepower. <laughs> okay, here we go. Twin turbocharged V8 versus supercharged V8. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Oh, what the hell? What? <laughs> I got a speed warning. Shut up, speed warning. <laughs> Ooh, holy mother of God. What are you doing, BMW? What are you doing? Oh, there's a charger. <laughs> this feels like a 911 Turbo S. It looked like a cartoon. It, it left an M5 CS shaped cloud where it was. <laughs> what the? That's the most insane. You, the gap. I might as well have not even done the race. I, I didn't expect that. I did not expect that. <laughs> I was killing myself laughing. It was so comical. Wow. What on earth? Did it hurt? <laughs> you, you know how like that's a selling point for the Turbo S? Yeah. That might just on its own. I haven't tracked this yet, but it might on its own be a selling point for this. What? Was your launch, on all earth. things considered, was your launch okay? It was fine. I mean, it's, it's as fine. good as you get in a Hellcat. Like, yeah. honestly, I was fully distracted by looking up and see, I, I literally looked up and was like, you were halfway down the strip and I was getting going. Wow, the speed. Okay, 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 okay. Back to reality. Um, let's, uh, let's remove your, uh, your, your godlike launch control system mm -hmm. and put you in rear wheel drive only mode and see what you got, okay? Okay. Yeah, let's do it. All let's right. do it. All right. <laughs> take oh, a breather. I can't take, go over that. Take a minute. <laughs> what are you doing, BMW? What are you doing? That shouldn't move like that. The M5 Comp doesn't move like that. All right, two wheel drive. Okay, so Thomas has taken away my all wheel drive advantage and I have no longer got launch control. Okay, here we go. Okay, all right, keep me traction. It's a bit more fair. Oh. Okay, now my foot's to the floor. 160, 180. And it, he's pulling away at the top end. Oh, he's there, he's there. And a bird has pooped on the windscreen for me so that I haven't got to do it. Thank you, bird. Really appreciate it. Oh my God. I'm sorry, Hellcat guys like no the germans got you beat fair and square you're hey. pulling away at the top end it felt like it yeah you didn't feel it was you were gapping me yeah like you got a better launch because these things are bloody impossible to get off the line and then you just kept walking away i did yeah. how many horsepower did they put in it the right uh, the right amount yeah so w. annoying <laughs> it's got to have 900 horsepower Wow. What's this? What do they say that it has? 627. My ass. All right, let's do a roll race because that will change nothing. Stupid BMW. Okay. And go. Oh, it's close. Oh, it's not. And no, he just 100% just more horsepower. That's insane. This has 797 horsepower, everyone. Pull the Lance Armstrong company. We were not matched. You were walking away. You know what this is? This is the big, loud American showing off everything he's got. Yeah. And then this is the uh, European. What's the Talladega Nights? This is Sasha Baron Cohen's character. <laughs> yeah, it yeah, is. Say that you love clips. Yeah. <laughs> it, it still knows what it can do. It's insane. Like, do, do you know the weights of these? 
Yeah. You don't, do you? He's not. Here they are. This is 4,100 pounds. That's 41. actually quite light for that. It's really, it's light. Yeah. I would be very shocked if that was any lighter. Um, either way, this has 797 horsepower, and I really was hoping that I was going to be able to walk you in the roll. That was a perfect roll race. Everything went perfectly. Perfect. perfect. It's Shifted. just yep. the power to weight is just better. End. Yes. And so therefore, this is a better car. But you know what, though? You know what? Yeah. Okay. Who, how often, really, are you launching off of? You're never launching. You're, oh, you live at your top speed. And this, oh, wow, this lights. is the fastest four-door muscle car in the world. So I'm gonna do the track. You see ya. Okay. Obviously, it's not all about speed. It's also about how cars go around corners. And Dodge is great at that. Not really. Um, the Challenger is a big boat. I called it an idiot on the track, actually. And I've been always worried that the Charger version of it would be just the same. But before we get to that, how is it to live with? Well, Dodge has given this some fancy stuff because it's the red-eye version, including a speedometer that goes all the way up to 340 kilometers an hour and some black badging that says SRT there. Other than that, it's basically no different to a Charger or a Challenger that costs a fraction of the price. At least on the inside. On the outside, it gets the regular Hellcat wide body, which gives it these P0 performance tires and SRT-tuned Bilstein competition suspension. It also gets big Brembo brakes to stop its more than four and a half thousand pound behind. And on top of that, it gets 80 more horsepower than the regular Hellcat. But at least they haven't ruined the livability of it because it's a red eye. I'm in track mode right now, and honestly, the damping is still fine. It's a bit stiff, but in comfort, it's totally livable. The seats are comfortable. There's tons of visibility and headroom and space, and there's rear seats that are usable for a normal human being. <laughs> As you saw in the straightaway, oh, the power is insane. <laughs> and out here, it doesn't feel any different. just hauls and you've got that supercharger scream up front. Oh, that doesn't get old. It really doesn't get old. Dodge is adamant that they make these cars for fun. First and foremost, fun. And you know what? That's true because this isn't as good to drive as a Camaro. It's not as sharp as a Mustang. And let's not talk about the Germans. But what it does do is put a big, big, big old dumb smile on your face because holy crap, is this car fun to drive. Everything about this car feels like a guilty pleasure for some reason. I feel like I'm watching Love Actually while listening to Let It Go, Frozen. I mean, watching Die Hard while listening to Led Zeppelin. Okay, let's get this out of the way quickly, because we're on the track. Does the M5 CS work as a road car? Answer, yes. I've been living with this. The suspension is firm, but in a very German way. It's a bit like the 911 Turbo, where it stays composed, but it, if you really, really need a Wii, it isn't so great. That is anecdotal. The interior is very much like the new M5 competition. In fact, it benefits from the LCI stuff. So we've got these new things going on here. But the CS parts of it with the Alcantara steering wheel, the CS badge here, these unbelievable seats, which as far as I can tell, even though they might have a different part number, are the same as in the new M3 and M4. And the seats in the back are a triumph. You're literally gonna be, if you have kids, the coolest parent ever when they get in that. It's basically a cockpit back there as well. But you are saying goodbye to some tech. This doesn't get lane keep assist. It doesn't get radar cruise control. It doesn't get the 360 camera. But you still have storage space in the doors. You've got this thing here. You've got the center cubby here. It's a bit stiff in this car. Oh, no. Oh, no, oh, no, 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 no. So you don't... You don't get that. Uh, BMW don't have to know about that. Uh, no center cubby in this. I guess it has that in common with the M2CS. And then what's the other thing that threatens the ability to daily drive this? Is the performance too much? 
it doesn't matter because BMW's engine and transmission tuning, I think, I think is second to none. AMG could learn a lot from this because despite all the power it has, it is just so easy to drive. The transmission, this eight-speed ZF is beautiful on the road. You're never afraid of the power, but you're always aware of it. And there is so much power. Guess what? It is now lighter than an Acura TLX Type S. And forget the E63S, this is lighter than a C63S Coupe. It's a whole class below. So what does that mean when it comes to being in the driver's seat? Well, it's got a massive toll on the steering in that it's so improved over the normal M5 competition, which was one of our only issues with the M5 competition. These tires, the lighter weight, there's more feel coming through the steering. I'm more aware of what the front wheels are doing. It feels like an M4. I just lost the rear end there. It doesn't feel heavy. And the power. But more than the power, the turning on this, that is, that is turning in like an M4. Unbelievable. Yeah, okay, that ZF eight speed is not as exciting on the track as AMG's nine speed. Now it makes you wonder because, oh, yeah, I, you know what? I'm, I'm blindly driving this like it's an M2 CS. That shouldn't, I have to keep reminding myself, this is an executive sedan, whatever you call it, compact executive luxury, it's an M5 and it's driving like an M4 and almost like an M2. And you know what? It's fun. As a result of the weight savings in this car, for whatever reason, it's not as insulated. On the highway, it's not whisper quiet. It's very quiet. You can still have a perfectly normal conversation at 110, 100 kilometers an hour. But kind of on the flip side of that, the other thing we found with the M5 competition is, and it's, and it's like pivotal to the impression you get when you drive it, is it hides its speed so well. And that's, I'm sure that's fantastic on the Autobahn. But I, for one, like the sensation of speed. And in this car, you're not as insulated from it. So it's more engaging. And speed, it does have. OK, before I start being really stupid with it, quick technical assessment. Brakes, not very good. But the turn in on this car is really great. The steering weights up beautifully with actually a lot of weight to it. I can feel what's going on in the front end very easily. And this is better balanced than the Challenger. I feel like I have control over the rear end and it limit oversteers going into corners on the brakes. Transmission too. Oh, it's so sharp. It's very sad. Like the, it works really well in auto mode, but I don't use auto mode because the paddles are so fun. There is a little bit of understeer, yes, but it doesn't really matter because even if you get understeer, you just dab the throttle and that happens. <laughs> it's so engaging to drive. It's constantly losing traction in the rear end. And there's lots communicated from every part of it. Yeah, it feels heavy, I'm not gonna lie to you, but I, I don't know. It's, it's just, it's a fun heavy, not an annoying heavy. <laughs> this is the type of car that you have to manhandle. By the way, I asked Dodge. They still don't know what that weird harmonic is that you heard there in second gear. It doesn't seem to like to stay near the red line during a slide. Third gear doesn't do that, but second gear does. <laughs> It's so fun to drive. I think this is one of the most fun sedans or even cars that I've driven on this track this year. It's crazy good. If you're thinking about buying one of these, do it. <laughs> yeah, okay. Thomas is doing ridiculous acrobatics with the red eye and this is a more serious track monster, but it has a two-wheel drive mode. 
which means it's every bit the hooligan. Oh, that's unbelievable. It doesn't do it with the same roaring AMG that the E63S did it, all quite with the same ease, although that might be down to tires. But it does it. I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think. The M4 is just above half the price of this, and it's not half the car. And saying this drives like an M4 makes you think, well, why don't you just get an M4? Well, for one thing, this doesn't look like a perineum. Sorry, M4. Don't look that up. And the M4 does not have a 4.4 litre twin turbo V8. But it, they both can do that. Oh, that's good. Oh, it's good. All right, I gotta, I gotta try that red eye. We each grabbed each other's cars and put them through their paces. James was reminded just how fun anything with a Hellcat badge can be, and I was completely and utterly blown away by the M5 CS. It feels leagues sharper and lighter than the M5 Comp, and it was genuinely engaging. The more I pushed it, the better it got, and it didn't let itself down anywhere. I had no doubts that it was going to turn out an incredible lap time. But first, let's look at the fastest lap in the red eye. As usual, our rules are one warm-up lap and only five hot laps for me to set the fastest time I can. And yes, these laps were done at the beginning of the day when the tires were still fresh. Now, the red eye. Just by driving it, I knew it was going to be faster than the Challenger, but it's still a big, heavy muscle car, and as you can see, most of the effort was going towards trying to keep the power down through the corners. This car just wants to spin its tires all the time. It's great fun, but it's not that quick. Let's watch the rest of the lap. Okay, now, the M5 CS. I immediately realized that this was going to be a very quick lap. I couldn't believe how much this thing handled like a smaller, lighter car. It turns in with incredible precision, and once you get past the cornering grip level limit, which is very high, the handling characteristics are spot on. So I could easily drive it right at the edge. The all-wheel drive system also did a great job of letting me drive it like a rear-wheel drive car on the throttle, but would still put down its crushing power out of the corners. Let's watch the rest of the lap. the lap times. Oh, wow, this sounds, uh, you, you put some heat into this, eh? Yeah, yeah it's this fan. The fan will go forever in these, like, it depends. Um, okay, so. That was exciting. Really, really, really quickly, both yeah. of these are brilliant handling sedans. This is, this is honestly, yeah. well, I mean, you drove it. It's, it's, it's fun, but when you really start to push it, it actually has some very, very good dynamics. Yeah. But, that doesn't but, mean it's a fast lap time. I was going to say, fun is its priority. <laughs> yeah, the brakes in this are garbage. Like, I know they're very proud of them. I'm sorry, guys. They're just not. I, but we bed them in even and made sure that they were good. They're just not powerful enough. The brakes in this are like, they're like being hit by a bus. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, I'm so excited right I'm now. I'm conflicted. I'm pacing. I'm okay, conflicted you ready? because these are technically giant sedans. Yes. 
And the, the Challenger Red Eye, it's very slow last time. Yeah. In fact, I, have, I think it was like a 116. 116. But I've always thought the Charger was a better driving car it than the Challenger. It is absolutely a better driving car. It's better balanced. It's easier to and drive this, fast. And I, and I think this is fantastic. Yep. And I know it's sublime and amazing, but it can't possibly match the... You didn't look as fast as the M2CS on the track, but on the streets, I had the V8, the 600... Uh, 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 uh. What, is it? what, what are, are your it? guesses? I'm curious. All right, so my guesses were, yeah. based, based on the 116 from the Red Eye Challenger, yeah. this would be a 114.8. Okay. So just over a second faster, which is quite significant. Yeah. And that this would be just a bit slower than an M2 Comp. So like a 113.5, I think, is, would be okay. where my head's at. I mean, you're, you're pretty close and yeah. absolutely wrong at the same time. Um, okay, so this one did a one four. You got to go. Flex in that bonnet. Yeah. Go on, go on. Saving Sorry. weight. Saving weight. One fourteen one. Okay, so I got the right. Quite good. Yes. I'm very impressed with that. Don't think I can get any more of it. You watch the in car. I was all over the place. It's a hilarious beast to drive. Now the M5CS. This is the <clears throat> this is the situation that we have here. Okay. What a car. So the what did the M2CS do? The CS did like a one ten. Yeah. 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 What do you mean? What do you mean? Yeah. 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 One. Ten. O oh, two. Wow. So a one ten zero. Wow. Do you want to know why? Because it's freaking unbelievable. This car is so good, and I just I couldn't like just the combination of how the it felt like an M the new M four in the corners. It yeah. absolutely felt like the new M four, and then the oh there's the engine trying, and then the power and the all wheel drive coming out of the corners. My top speeds at the end of the little straightaways were absurd. Right? So not only does it make up time in the corners, yeah. it makes up time in the straights. It's easy to drive. Oh, it's got all-wheel drive. I'm so glad. It's an I'm... unbelievable time. Yeah. To be fair, we haven't run the regular M5 around here, and I don't know exactly what it would be. Um, are you done? Um, but the But the M5 CS is, I, I don't care what anyone says, this is one of the best, like, big sedans that BMW's made in a long time. And it's just such a departure from the regular M5. Wow. It really is. And, as we mentioned, that departure does come at a little bit of a cost. Not just a financial one, because where the normal M5 focuses on luxury and speed equally, the M5 CS, in true CS fashion, drops the luxury in place of sportiness. So, among other things, the ride around town is firm. The sound system is average, and as I learned the hard way, there's no centre cubby. But from the driver's seat, you just can't care. It is that good. And the red eye is good in its own way. Obviously it doesn't have the overall performance of the M5, but what it lacks in traction, it makes up for in sheer driving fun. Better to drive than the Challenger, and with four seats, a trunk, and a supercharged V8 up front, it will go down in history as one of the most ridiculous everyday family cars ever made. But between these two? Assuming price isn't an issue, personally I'd take the M5. It's probably BMW's best balance of performance and livability in years. Agreed. I get a huge kick out of the red eye. But if I'm choosing one today, it is the M5 CS. And I'd get a Durango Hellcat for the family road trips. But James, now you've spent 300 grand. Shh, yeah. Money, please. Thanks for watching.